It's time for the question and answer session. We at Microsoft Corporation have given an opportunity to the IT and developer community to voice your questions. We have received thousands of questions all over the world and we thank you for your overwhelming response. And we have selected a few questions that will be answered. And to answer those questions, please welcome back Mr. Bill Gates. And to moderate the session, please welcome Sheila Gulati, Director, Microsoft India, on stage. All right. Good afternoon, Bangalore. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the thousands of people that logged on to MSN and sent us their questions from around the world. We've picked the best, most interesting questions for you here today, and you have the opportunity to hear the answer straight from Bill. So first question for you, Bill. What did you most like about computers when you started using them? I was just fascinated by the idea that if you wrote a piece of software, you could get the computer to do something automatic for you. And, and it was all just in your brain. You could think up almost anything you wanted to do, you could get the computer to do it. And it's almost laughable now to think that you know, the very first program that I wrote was one that would play games like Monopoly or Tic-Tac-Toe and things like that. I took my mother's recipes and I made a database out of them. You know, back then that was considered a very big deal just to get computers to do simple things like that. But the whole idea of there didn't seem to be any limit to what ingenuity could create. You know, I didn't have to have a factory or anything like that, just an imagination and writing software. Excellent. So if you were not a software engineer, what would you be? What profession would you want to choose? Well, I think it's pretty clear there's two fields that are really changing the world right now. Uh, the first and foremost uh, is IT. You know, the kind of way that we make the world smaller and let people express themselves. There's nothing quite as magical as that. But in fact, what's going on in biology is also quite dy dynamic. The ability to cure diseases that have been around forever, uh, literally in the next 20 years, most of the disease burden, I think, will have great medicines and get rid of the most, uh, most of that. So I feel pretty sure that if I, for some reason, I wasn't allowed to write code, I'd be uh, inventing new drugs and working in biology, uh, trying to understand the, the brain and, and the human body. So I think that we've all read a lot about the work that you're doing with the foundation and the work that you're doing to improve the health of underprivileged people. Can you share with us some of that progress and some of the observations you've learned from that work? Well, I was amazed when I started thinking about uh, what am I going to do with the money I have. Not a uh, problem. <laughs> and I thought, hey, this is going to be tough. Uh, because if there's anything really important to do, governments have more money than I do, and uh, people have been around a long time, so it's going to be tough to find something that's really quite dramatic. In fact, the good news, which you could say is also bad news, is I found that there's a set of diseases, which are those that don't exist in rich countries, that exist in the developing countries, including a number of them here in India, uh, that are not receiving the brightest minds and the money to go develop vaccines and medicines for those diseases. And so the top priority that the foundation has taken on is, is going after those top 20 killers and saying that if we can get rid of those, then 90% of the difference in health outcomes between the rich world and the rest of the world can be eliminated. Now, many of those are going to be very tough. It's not an overnight thing. It's uh, you know, like speech recognition, model-driven software. You've got to get the best people and go, go at it uh, for even more than a decade. But whether it's AIDS or malaria, tuberculosis, uh, Kalazar's disease, all of these things, the advances in biology, uh, with very smart people, the right kind of leadership, and a little money, a few billion here and there, uh, uh, makes me feel like 
uh, that's going to be a, a really neat thing. And, and so that's uh, what I take on essentially as, as my hobby, uh, that is, when I'm not doing my full-time job. I think I speak for the whole audience that it's inspirational for us to see that you have such a hobby and such important work that you can add to your day job. So it's a good lesson for all of us. So back to the uh, developer questions. So we want to know what did you last code and when did you last code? Huh. <laughs> I have to admit, this is, I have a real problem, which is I go to these meetings with developers and they often will say to me, well, this will take a year to get done. And I say, come on, uh, you know, that's ridiculous. Uh, you should be able to get this done so quickly, it's so easy. Well, back uh, when I'd done a lot of coding recently, I could say, look, I'm going to come in this weekend and do it. Uh, now if I say that, it's, they can kind of look at me like, come on, uh, you, you haven't written shitting code for quite some time. I do write a lot of programs myself just to make sure I'm understanding C Sharp, BizTalk, what's easy, what's hard. How do you customize things? But the last uh, complete product that was written entirely by me uh, was all the way back in uh, 1983. was my last complete product. It was the uh, first handheld computer. And the last shipping code for me was in the, the early 90s. Um, so now I'm just a developer on top of the system. Although I, I will say I do get to do a lot of architecture. Uh, the idea of how we're building the systems, the risks we're taking, uh, the basic approaches there, uh, that, that is uh, what I'm always sitting in down and brainstorming with the developers about. Good. So we got a lot of questions on your vision for the future of computing and the future of technology five, ten years out. Can you share a bit of that vision with us, and then also let us know how you think India can play a leading role in the future of technology. Well, the computer is changing at actually an increased rate of speed, and we can see it in, in so many areas. We see it in the phone uh, in terms of all those new capabilities I talked about. <coughs> we see it in the home where the way you'll get TV and video games, the way you'll take memories of your kids going up, the way you'll annotate those things and be able to navigate, search those things will be a lot better. Uh, we see it in the, the tough problems that we're on the verge of solving. Uh, things like machine translation, the computer will be able to translate from one language into another. Uh, you know, we're, we're literally on the verge of, of being able to do that. And if you really take all the pieces, the hardware advances, the software advances, in a sense, the personal computer is almost going to disappear because you have cameras and microphones that uh, are there but invisible. You'll have the ability to have a screen anywhere to project onto any wall, uh, any surface. You'll even have screens that you can just kind of unroll kind of like going back to the old scrolls that uh, they had back in uh, uh, the times of, of uh, the Bible, you know, when it was all uh, papyrus uh, type writing. And so we'll, we'll have this pervasive sense of computing where it's helping us out. You know, even the idea of being able to project onto your glasses. So if you're walking up to somebody you should remember, uh, reminds you who they are and what they like. Uh, you can appear to be semi-intelligent. Uh, <laughs> doing something like that. And so software is there driving all of those things, from the mundane of your schedule and organizing things to the profound, the, your medical records and uh, tracking uh, what's going on to uh, create a, a very secure environment. And so software research is very important. Uh, research is often done at the universities and done at companies that take a long-term view. Surprisingly, our industry does not have that many companies that do research. In fact, if you take ourselves and IBM, that would be a very high percentage of the very advanced research that's done. So when I think about India and their role in this, there's the obvious role, which is to continue to build the applications that use that platform. But I'd also say that India's at a juncture very similar to one that Microsoft itself got to. When we were a very young company, 
We benefited by the research that other people did. That is, Xerox Park and Bell Labs made huge contributions to the industry, sometimes that helped them, sometimes they didn't help uh, their own activities. We still should thank them. Uh, and companies like Apple and Microsoft uh, were able to benefit from that work. Then as Microsoft got bigger, we ourselves needed to replenish that and do lots of research, some of which will just benefit the industry and some portion of which will uh, also help us as well. Now, India's at that same type of juncture where you're building great applications, you're doing very state-of-the-art work, but there's a, this is a time also to get into the research side, to get uh, more PhDs, to have research labs that are built here. And it doesn't happen overnight, uh, but it's something that uh, we're, our coming here with the research lab is a real acknowledgement that we know it can be done and we want to help push that forward. So it role is, ranges all the way from that basic research to the application development, to the support type functions, uh, building uh, more products. This vision of software as a service actually takes a lot of the skills that the systems integrators have here and make them very relevant as the boundary between what a service and what's a product actually uh, is a, it's really aspects of both of those uh, that's involved in, in state-of-the-art work. And so it's a very broad goal uh, that will continue to tax the ability to turn out the incredible graduates. I think the, the, the limiting factor will be the way that you scale up your educational uh, capabilities. Excellent. So, but no shortage of opportunities for India. So another question on India. There was a lot written about your fondness for samosas while you were in North India. Well, we're lucky to welcome you to South India. But the question that all of South India is dying to know is, is it the idli or the dosa for you, Bill? Well, that's, uh, it's really hard for me to say. Uh, when I was having a breakfast uh, the other day, they actually served me this upma. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I wouldn't know how to make it, but it, it sure tasted good. F fingers or forks? Well, I, 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 I accidentally used my fingers, and fortunately for me, I got told that at least in some parts of the country, that's considered okay. That's considered very good for us. So, Bill, what advice would you give to Indian entrepreneurs who are trying to start or grow their companies? Well, the opportunity in this space is, is really quite vast. Uh, as you're building new companies, I think it's important to understand that it's not just the success of your company. You want to pick something that you enjoy doing, that, that you're working with people who are really fun people, you like getting stuff done with those people. It can't just be the goal that's many years out there. It's got to be that you wake up in the morning and you think, yes, this is going to be a challenge to me, the type of thing that I'm, I'm very good to work on. I would say that it's very important to constantly renew your skills, uh, whether it's understanding what tools uh, need to be used, what's going on with the platform, the new designs. Uh, the rules are constantly changing. And the best opportunity is somebody who gets on that forefront and surprises people by how they, they push that forward. And so a constant curiosity and surrounding yourselves with people with the same, I think, uh, is a, at least a necessary part of success. Excellent. So, so now for a sports question. This one's very important. So the question is cricket or I, I, what else there, right? Cricket. <laughs> well, I'm learning about cricket. Uh, in fact, I, I was thrilled to hear that the cricket team uses a, a media PC, uh, a media center PC, to actually record what their competitors are doing and what they do right and wrong. And, uh, and then they, they review that. So, you know, these guys, they're pretty state-of-the-art. They're pretty tech-savvy. And uh, so I signed the bat uh, for them, you know, just to say thanks for showing off the technology and uh, really uh, taking a modern approach to uh, good excellence. Excellent, excellent. 
So what's your final piece of advice for Indian developers? Well, I, in many ways, I envy uh, all of you. you know, to be uh, a young developer right now, this, this is the neatest time uh, to be in that position. Whether it's going home at night and just playing around and building some new applications, whether it's going in and understanding a uh, type of business that you're building things for, where you can say to them, look, not only can we help you uh, where your costs uh, can be contained, we can really make you more effective, whether it's product design, customer support. You know, software, it's, it's not an industry where anything repeats itself. It's not like being, you know, a stock broker where you have to sell the same stock or somebody makes bread where it's the same thing. We are in a constant state of, of revolution. You're building on success, the world's recognition that the best system integration work is done here. Not because the price is necessarily better, although that was a key way to get into the market, but really just because the work is the best, uh, that is very strong. And it's not just the United States, it's very broad now. And so that means that those of you who really rise to that challenge, learn how to manage, uh, learn how to uh, bring in new people and get them trained, uh, really, the, the sky's the limit. And for Microsoft, it's important that we uh, work with you, partner with you, and, and let you uh, uh, take your skills anywhere that you want to go. Well, I would like to thank you, Bill, for your time today. And I'd like the audience to help me with a huge round of applause for Bill, to thank him for being here with us in India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.